Okay, our first objective today is to graph a logarithm using our calculator and the change of base formula. Now, you'll notice this problem says log base 2 of the absolute value of x minus 3. And we don't have a log base 2 button on our calculator. So what we did before was we did 2 to the y power equals the absolute value of x minus 3. That's how we would have done it before. Okay? Uh, to avoid that scenario, if we want to just do a more traditional pick x solve y top type problem, um, I can read write f of x using a law of logarithms that we learned on Friday, the change of base formula. Change of base says if I have log of something base something, so we have an argument of this, a base of that, we can change it to either ln or log, take your pick, doesn't matter. I'm going to go ln, I prefer that one. Absolute value of x minus 3, so you do the, whatever base you want logarithm on top, the same base logarithm of the base on the bottom. That's the requirement. That's how change of base formula works. And if you have log of x base y, you get ln x over ln y. So log of argument on top, log of base on the bottom. This right here can be under my calculator because I have an ln key. So I go over here, and I'm going to go to y equals. I'll clear out stuff that's in there because I don't need that for this problem. Okay, I like all my y's to be empty before I start graphing stuff. And I'm going to type in exactly that expression, the log of the absolute value of x minus 3. So I've got my classic type on. If you have your, um, your math type, I think it still puts like parentheses there, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. All right. Anyway, what's inside that parentheses when I'm taking the log of? I want to take the log of the absolute value of x minus 3. So the way I find absolute value, there's a couple places. First place, you can go to the math menu, and there's all this stuff at the top. You slide over to the right, there's absolute value under number. Okay, that's one way of getting to it. Another way of getting to it is if you're just anywhere, well, actually right here, and I want to stick it right there. Um, right here, the catalog, if I hit second zero, brings up the catalog. It's the very first thing in the catalog. That's how I usually get absolute value. If you have classic turn on, you have ABS parentheses, if you have math type, it'll put an absolute value bar there. So the absolute value bar, you've got to type inside of it. Take your pick on how you want that to be. So x minus 3, n parentheses for the absolute value expression, n parentheses for the end of the logarithm. Now, the fact that it has log of that expression in parentheses, that makes it all one piece. So your calculator knows that's the entire top. All that belongs to the top. So I hit divided by ln2, n parentheses. That all belongs to the bottom. That's fine. If you want to put extra parentheses, one before this, one after this, one before this, one after that, you can. But just know ln of 2, your calculator knows those are together. So it's not going to like put the two all the way up on the top anymore. So that's the expression. Now the other thing I need to know to be able to graph this thing is what the domain is. Because I can't graph if I don't know a domain. Domain gives me rules for picking x. Alright, so what do we know about logarithms? Going back to the original problem before I even messed with it at all. When it still looked like this. What's the argument of this function? Absolute value of x minus 3. What do we know about the logarithm of anything? We can take the log of what? What can we take the log of? Legally. I'll, I'll throw a couple down here. You tell me. Can I do log of 7? Uh, not in my head, but it's possible to do that. I mean, there's an answer to it, right? Can I do the ln of 3? Yes. Okay. Can I do log base 17 of 0.2? 17 to some power equals 0.2? Probably. Can I do log of 0 base 5? Let's, let's look at that one. This says 5 to the x power equals 0. So I need somebody to pick me a power that if I raise 5 to that power, I'm going to get 0 out. Not possible, right? So, so log of 0 is out. We can't do log of 0. That's illegal. All right, let's try another one. Log of negative 3 base 3. Want to look at that one? 3 to the y power equals negative 3. Is that possible? Power is going to so it looks like if the power is positive, it's possible, right? 10 to the x power is equal to 7, that's possible. E to the uh, x power equals 3, that's possible. 17 to some power equals 0.2, that's possible. You can't make a 0 or a negative number out of a logarithm, all right? Or, or I should say as an argument. So the arguments of 0 and negative numbers are illegal. So looking at this, as far as domain is concerned, the absolute value of x minus 3 is required to be positive, all right? Now, let's consider absolute value real quick to help determine the domain of this thing, All right? Can absolute value of something, so absolute value of stuff,
what's the characteristic of that? What type of number do you get out of that? Positive. Positive or what? Zero. Or zero. Okay, that's it. If you have absolute value bars around any expression, the outcome is going to be either a positive number or a zero. Of these two things, which of those would be bad? Zero. Zero is bad. All right. So I don't have to really worry about the greater than zero part so much as I have to worry about the equals to zero part. Right? Because right. as long as my absolute value is greater than zero, all is well. So any place this equals zero is a bad thing. The only place it equals zero is when x minus 3 equals zero, which is that x equals 3. So x is not allowed to equal 3 is basically the outcome of my domain search here. Okay. And if I get a domain that says x is not allowed to equal something, what number should I pick? Greater than or, or less. even less than that, but close to it. Anytime x isn't allowed to equal something, pick numbers close. Imagine it's like an electric fence, okay? That's what I want you to consider x is not equal to, to be like an electric fence. All right, so one, two, three. Here's my vertical asymptote here. Very, very, very powerful electric fence. So powerful, if you touch it, your finger disintegrates. It's that powerful, yeah. If you think about touching, it hurts you. If you think about touching it, it's that powerful, all right? It's one of those that, if, as you get close to it, you can hear it humming because it's got so much electricity pumping through it. Mm -hmm. Got the idea? Yep. What do we do when we hear an electric fence humming? We don't walk into it. We get closer to it because we're interested, right? Because we're curious, <laughs> crazy people, right? We, wow, that's humming. I wonder why it's humming. You know, is it humming a song that I know? I don't know. Anyway, but that's what people tend to do. They, they see an electric fence, they get closer to it to investigate, but they don't want to touch it, right? Don't want to touch it. I want to touch it, but they don't ever touch it. You want to get close. That's all we got to do here. X is not equal to 3. It's just an electric fence. We want to get as close to it as we can without touching it. So I'm going to pick numbers close to it, like 2.9 is close to it, 2.5, and a 2, and 1, and 0. Those numbers are all close to it on the left-hand side. I also want to pick close to it on the right-hand side. That's plain view. Move that over there. Just extend this down. Okay, so 3.1 is as close as 2.9 is just on the other side. 3.5, 3, .5, 3 uh, 4, 5, and 6. Obviously, I can't pick 3 because if I pick 3, it'll say error. To verify that fact, if I come over here and type in 3, it says error. Because, again, the log of 0 is undefined. It's not possible to do that. But again, all this equation is doing, if you look at what I typed into y equals, y equals is simply... I can get to it. One, you can do it. There we go. All right. Get to y equals. This is equivalent to what I have circled in green. It's actually what I have written in blue. They're equivalent because we used to change the base formula. I go to my table. I've got a bunch of x's I want to evaluate. So 2.9 gets me something. Negative 3.322. 2.5 gets me something. Negative 1. 2 gets me something. 1 gets me something. 0 gets me something. 0, 1, and 1.585. We can't do log of 0, so why in the world can I put 0 in? This says 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3, absolute value, that's 3, log of 3, base 2 is possible. So again, it doesn't matter what x's value is, it matters what the argument equals when x equals these numbers, okay? Um, 3.1 gets me an answer, 3.5 gets me an answer, and these answers look familiar as I'm typing them in, 4, 5, 6. Hey, look, they're exactly the same. Same, 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 same. It's not a parabola, but it's a symmetric, all right? Par parabolas are symmetric, but not everything symmetric is a parabola. All right, so we got a graph to find out what we have. So negative 3.32, negative 1, 0, 1, and 1.585. The other way, we have negative 3.32, negative 1, 0, 1, and 1.585. So just like that, we picked x, we solved for y, we got a bunch of points, and now we're going to plot those points to see what the graph looks like. So if I go with 2.9, negative 3.32, 1, 2, 3.32, it's almost touching electric fence, but it's not quite there, and it goes down 3.32 negative. Uh, 2.5, negative 1 would just be right here, halfway between 2 and 3 at negative 1. 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1.585, which would be a little higher than halfway. And then if I plot the other ones, 3.1 comma negative 3.32, same split, same distance away, just like so. And then we get uh, 3.5 negative 1, and then we get 4, 0, 5, 1, and 6, 1.585. So the one side looks like this. Kind of starts 
scoot it over that way. And the other side looks like this. And just like that, we'll get our nice graph. Again, the symmetry is there, but it's not a parabola. Okay. What's on the right-hand side of this asymptote is what log usually looks like. It usually goes straight. Uh, it comes from negative infinity straight up and then across, kind of like that. Um, the fact that we have absolute value bars allows that mirror image to show up. Usually, you don't get a log going both directions, but with absolute value, or if you have like log of x squared, for example, uh, negative one squared is positive one, positive one squared is positive one, zero squared is zero, so we ask them to the zero, but then you can go both directions on that one. So, anything that allows you to pick numbers on either side of the asymptote that creates positives on both sides, that's what would allow you to get some mirror image stuff going on. But um, for the most part, um, usually logarithms just have an asymptote and they go in one direction. I could just go that direction if there's a minus sign in front of the argument, like log minus x, it would go that way. Log positive x goes that way. Log of absolute value goes, goes both ways. Okay. 